Let's head into this newscast with all our latest coverage coming in from the United States as the number of coronavirus cases in U.S. has now surpassed one million. The disease has also claimed more American lives than the Vietnam War. Now, at least 58,220 Americans were killed in the U.S.'s deadliest war in Vietnam in two decades. COVID-19 has, of course, claimed over 59,200 lives in just over three months. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump continued to push for economic reopening, even as the outbreak became worse. We built the greatest economy anywhere in the world two months ago, and we're going to build it again. We're going to build it fast. It's going to go very quickly. And Larry, thank you for being here very much. Uh, it's uh, you see what's going to happen. I think you have the same feeling as I do. It's going to come back very fast. Now that our experts believe the worst days of the pandemic are behind us, Americans are looking forward to the safe and rapid reopening of our country. Throughout this ordeal, millions of hardworking Americans have been asked for, to really make tremendous, tremendous sacrifices. Trump also proposed carrying out COVID-19 tests on international flights to curb imported cases. They're doing it on the international flights coming out of areas that are heavily in infected. Uh, as you know, Brazil is getting to that category. I think they're going to be OK. I hope they're going to be OK. He's a very good friend of mine. And now let's quickly go across to our correspondent, Jagriti Dave, who's joining me live from Washington, D.C., with more details. Jagriti, a very warm welcome. Now, let's begin with the figures. According to John Hopkins' figures, the number of cases in the United States has reached the one million mark, with American fatalities higher than that of the Vietnam War. Is the U.S. president disregarding the figures by insisting on reopening the economy and instructing governors to reopen schools? There is, um, has been a, a, a difference between the states and the federal government's um, responses to this. Um, states have, such as New York, um, have talked about um, gradual reopening, have been very cautious when they've been talking about reopening um, their economies. And um, you're hearing uh, just uh, now uh, the, the governor of California, one of the first early states to have been affected by the virus, talking about um, re a, a gradual reopening there, saying, It'll probably be weeks, not months. But none of them are as optimistic uh, as the president in terms of the language they are using about the reopening of the economy. So there has been this entire difference um, between the two. And of course, um, the uh, number of cases in the United States passing the million mark is um, an incredibly uh, grim uh, number to, to look at. And that is obviously adding to that tension um, between uh, public health and the economy as um, the federal government and President Trump has an eye to trying to kick start um, the economy which has seen um, nearly 26 million people filing for unemployment but also that grim death toll um, that is continuing to rise. Um, states are concerned that uh, as well as health experts of the possibility of a second wave and this isn't just in the US this is around the world there are concerns that opening up too early could uh, instigate a second right. wave and nobody wants to see that happen. Right, Jagdi, and going by the figures we just mentioned, also Dr. Anthony Fauci has stated that everyone in the United States who needs a coronavirus test will be able to get one by the end of May. Many even doubt that even that is a possibility or not. Is the medical infrastructure not in shambles? There has been um, issues with testing. Um, states have been saying that um, initially that there is not enough widespread testing happening on a federal level. Um, the federal government is saying that the capacity is there and the states are then saying that um, the supplies, for example, that require the test to be processed aren't there. And that was an issue that was raised with the vice president, Mike Pence, who had said that um, there would be a certain, uh, there would be uh, millions of tests that would occur. Um, and then when he was questioned on that number, um, he said, 
said that what he meant was that they would be available, but they wouldn't. But they weren't sure whether they were able to be processed because of the capacity, uh, because of the uh, issues of actually uh, getting the bits of kit that are needed to process those tests. So there have clearly been issues along the way. Um, several there were varying studies that show uh, that suggest how many tests need to be done in order for the economy to reopen, in order for the country to have a grip on the pandemic. A Harvard study suggests five million tests per day need to be conducted by June um, in order for the economy to be eco economy to be safely reopened. This was something that was put to the president today, and he said that they were very close to getting there. Right. All right. So testing, of course, continues to be a bone of contention. But U.S. lawmakers also want an investigation into America's coronavirus response. Something like the 9-11 Commission. What could the probe look like, especially when the U.S. president has today itself dodged questions about receiving repeated warnings on the threat of coronavirus? Yes, this is something that is... Um the, the, the president's critics have been saying for a while that the president was too slow to respond. The president underplayed um, the uh, the severity of the crisis by focusing on the economy, um, um, making claims that it was c comparing the virus to the flu, amongst other things. And the president um, continues to say that he acted fast and aggressively, pointing towards um, the ban, the travel ban on China and Europe um, in the early days at the end of January. January. So this, these are the sorts of things that are going that are, would be likely to be thrashed out. But most people agree that now is the time to concentrate on public health and make sure people are safe. Get a vac look look for a vaccine. Make sure there's enough testing that's uh, mm. able to be done. Those are the sorts of things that should be the focus right now. Right. And even when the president talked about looking into the World Health Organization with his criticisms globally, that was the reaction as well. That there'll be look at there's a time to look into what what went wrong, who is to blame, the role, the actions of the, the roles that people took. But now is not that time. All right, fair enough. Now, last but not the least, Jagriti, Hillary Clinton is expected to endorse Joe Biden today in an election which has turned into a referendum on Trump post the virus. What will Clinton's endorsement of Biden mean? Well, Hillary Clinton has, in fact, endorsed Joe Biden. It was in a Biden campaign town hall, an online event um, on the impact of COVID-19 on women. And um, Hillary Clinton, the former Secretary of State, former uh, Democratic nominee, um, endorsed uh, Joe Biden, the former Vice President, a colleague. They worked together under Barack Obama. And um, she uh, backed him to run against the man who defeated her in uh, 2016. And she commented about the president saying that um, think about what a difference it would make if we had a real president, not just one who played one on TV. And um, it's noticeable that Democrats from across the political spectrum have backed Joe Biden, which is a marked difference to 2016, where there was a rupture between the Clinton campaign and uh, the left wing of the party who supported Bernie Sanders. But that hasn't happened this time round. Um, so um, the Democrats are, are really trying to present a united uh, front um, in in the run-up to the election. And this is something that the Trump campaign, they tried to pick up on the divisions of... Um of last time round and the state's uh, statement from the president's campaign manager uh, said there's no greater concentration of democratic establishment than Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton together. So, um, yes, the former secretary of state having endorsed Joe Biden now um, as the candidate uh, who sh they want to see uh, fight Donald Trump uh, this November. Absolutely. And let's see how that actually pans out for the Republicans and Donald Trump, of course. On that note, thank you so much, Agati Ravi, for joining us on this morning broadcast.